Matthew chapter number 10. Let me caution you, please. Please listen to the message today. Do not turn off the message when you hear the title. Sometimes we sit in the house of God, and I know familiarity breeds contentment. Sometimes you'll hear something, you're saying, well, I've heard that before, and you tune it out. Don't tune out the title today. Listen, God wants to do a work in people's hearts today. Uh, we live in a dark, depressed world. And can I say, we're in this world hours and hours and hours a week, but yet we're only in the house of God a few hours a week. And you can't be in the midst of this filthy world and it not impact you. Uh, I read where a group of people went to tour the coal mines and they all uh, met the guide and was ready to take their tour. And one lady wore a white dress. And the tour guide said, Ma'am, are you sure you want to wear that white dress? She said, is there something wrong with my dress? He said, no, but you're going to enter in in a white dress, but you won't come out with a white dress on. And see, if you just walk through this world, you're subject for this world to attach itself to you and to me. That's why we need to bathe ourselves in the Word of God and in prayer and in the things of God and keep ourselves clean and unspotted in this world because this world will impact you. And can I say the message today is as the world impacts us, you know, we long for God to meet with us. We long to see people saved and we long to see revival. We long to see God do a great work in our days. But the truth of the matter is God longs for it more than we do. And today, this message God birthed in my heart is from the heart of God because God wants to impact lives. Because so many are subject to the philosophy and the wickedness of this sorry, no good world. So just hang with me for a minute. Matthew chapter number 10. We're getting read in verse number 1. The Bible says, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first Simon, who's called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, and Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Let's pray. Father, we sure do thank you. We're able to come to church today. We're thankful for a beautiful day. And God, we're thankful for the good grace of God. Lord, thank you for the good report of those three precious souls that were saved over at the jail this morning. Thank you for our folks having a burden to go and preach and minister and be a blessing and, and to be used in the services there. And God, thank you for the lives that were changed. Lord, we know it's your will that none should perish and that all should come to repentance. Uh, Lord, those that are behind bars can't come to church, but I'm glad for the open door where we can go to them and present the gospel. And God, we're thankful for this good number this morning. Thank you for these visitors, uh, some from Illinois and Texas and Wyoming and our dear friends from St. Lucia and, Lord, others that are here. We're thankful. And God, we're thankful for the good singing. Our souls have been blessed. And Lord, this table certainly has been set for the preaching of the Word of God. Now, Father, I pray that you would use this unworthy vessel. God, thank you for using Brother Lawrence and Brother Josh and Brother Jordan in our absence while we were on vacation. And God, thank you for the good reports and the good services. And God, but that won't suffice for this hour. And God, we come this morning knowing we need the presence of the Holy God in our midst. So God, we long for the power of God. Lord, uh, uh, if I just speak... Uh, Lord, uh, that I'll just be in order. And so, God, we need unction and power from God Almighty. We know the Word of God will not return void, but, God, we do know it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to sow the seed of the Word of God in people's hearts. Now, God, long before we ever was, you knew this day would come, and you knew who would be here, and you knew what we needed to hear. 
And so, God, we thank you, Lord, that you love us that much that you'd send a message our way. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, uh, uh, there'd be holy conviction in this place. The Spirit of God would not be grieved or quenched, but allowed to do His office work. I pray if there's somebody lost without God, uh, you'd show them their lost condition, but show them uh, that you love them and you'll save them. Uh, and through cords of love, I pray you'd draw them to your precious uh, self. And then, Father, I pray for the saints of God. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, who may be like that young lady who wore a white dress in a coal mine. Uh, they had no intentions of getting dirty, but yet just being in this world uh, can impact us and affect us. Uh, so, Father, I pray that uh, folks would have ears swift to hear uh, and would listen intently to the things of God and then be swift to do and be obedient to what thus saith the Lord. Uh, now, God, bring unto my remembrance those things that uh, uh, you have showed me, and I pray that you'd help me to say everything you'd have me to and God uh, guard my lips that I wouldn't say anything contrary to the will or word of God uh, again use this unworthy vessel get glory to your glorious name uh, bless uh, 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 throughout uh, uh, the world today as preachers are preaching the gospel I pray many souls would come to Christ uh, bless my preacher friends who are preaching anoint them and empower them uh, now Father be with those that are sick those that could not come to church today uh, God help them and bless them uh, be with those that are traveling be with our dear friend Brother Spivey, you know what he is facing, and God touch that man of God. Uh, Brother Pete, help him and others. Uh, these that, Lord, have cancer that are in treatment or recovering, God bless them and help them. Uh, now, Father, you we don't know what a day brings for tomorrow. It might be us who need prayer. Uh, so, God, help us to do business with God today uh, that we can have that faith that was just sung about uh, and have that peace that only God can provide. Uh, and God will bless you and praise you for it, for it's in the lovely uh, and wonderful wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. In these verses we find the disciples of Jesus Christ. Uh, can I say that uh, these 12 disciples came from diverse uh, backgrounds. Uh, you have some who were publicans, some who were fishermen, uh, 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 some who were uh, physicians. Uh, they came from all walks of life. Uh, can I say that God is no respecter of persons? Uh, it don't matter where you came from, God's interested in you. Uh, don't matter what your past is, uh, He's interested in your future. Uh, I'm glad uh, that God called us out uh, from a, a, a sorry no good world and fitly framed us together. Uh, we have people from all walks of life here today, uh, but aren't you glad the robe of righteousness makes us one? Uh, what a blessing to be saved by the good grace of God. Uh, what a blessing to be washed in His blood. Uh, what a blessing to be counted amongst uh, of the redeemed uh, and be accepted in the beloved. We see they had diverse backgrounds. Uh, can I say they were distinguished in their personalities? You had Peter who was a hothead and a big mouth. I identify with him. You have uh, 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 James and John. Uh, uh, they were called the sons of thunder. And you have different personalities. Each one of them was different. Uh, can I say we have different personalities in here today? Uh, uh, we have some that are emotional. Uh, uh, you hit a chord uh, uh, and you're liable to see Phil jump up and shout and hoop holler. Uh, you're liable to see Lawrence jump on a pew. Uh, you're liable to see James lose his mind. Uh, uh, we got some who are very emotional when they worship. Uh, uh, then we have some who are not emotional. Uh, uh, you'll not see uh, or hear much out of Brother Eric, but he listens intently and is trying to get something from God. Uh, you don't hear much out of Brother David, but he sits there and he soaks in uh, and he takes what he gets. Hey, we have all different uh, uh, personalities in here. Uh, uh, we have A-type personalities. Uh, uh, we have B-type personalities. Uh, we have weird personalities. Uh, we just got folks from every walks of life. We got folks that love sports and folks that hate sports. Uh, uh, we got folks that are uh, technical people and folks that don't understand it like me and give their phone to the kids to tell them how to work it. Uh, 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 we got folks from every uh, uh, background, every uh, uh, desire, every skill set. Uh, uh, isn't that just like God? Uh, he's interested in everybody. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, aren't you glad that God made a way and he grafted into the vine a way for Gentile dogs to get in the family of God I mean he came for the chosen of, of God the house of Israel as far as I know I don't know that there's any Jewish people in here but we got a lot of other folks aren't you glad God's not interested in color race, creed uh, aren't you glad uh, that God don't care how much money you got in the bank 
Aren't you glad that God doesn't care that only certain folks can get in? Hey, most of us are mutts. We got so many different bloodlines in our line, we don't know what we are. Uh, but aren't you glad uh, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin? Uh, and we who which were without have been made nigh uh, unto the things of God. Uh, aren't you glad uh, that God uh, is the true liberator? Mm. So we see they not only have diverse backgrounds and distinguished in their personalities, but they were defined by their actions. Uh, we know John as the disciple whom Jesus loved. We know that every time you find John, he's hanging around close to Jesus, and we even find him with his head on his bosom. And there's no mistaking John's the one that he loved. Matter of fact, it was John that he committed the watch care of his mother to when he's hanging on Calvary. I mean, John's the only one that died of a natural death. Oh, he was exiled to the Isle of Patmos. They tried to burn him in oil. They tried to do a lot of things to him. But can I say, uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Uh, so we know John was the disciple whom Jesus loved. We know Andrew as a soul winner. Andrew met the Lord and went and got Peter's brother. Uh -uh. Find it Nathaniel too, I believe. Andrew's a soul winner. We know Peter. Peter was uh, the stone, the little stone. A lot of people misinterpret that scripture when Jesus looked at Peter and says, Thou art Peter, means little stone. Right. And then there's a, uh, uh, there's a, a, a punctuation there, and then it says, And upon this rock I will build my church. He didn't build the church on Peter. He says, You're the little stone. And then he said, And upon this rock himself. He's the rock of ages. Huh? Yeah. I built my church. But Peter was instrumental in the early church. He was the stone. Peter was the great evangelist that preached on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 souls were added to the church that day. I mean, Peter was the evangelist. And we also know that James was called James the Just. James even found favor amongst the Romans. He was highly favored. He pastored the first church there in Jerusalem and it grew to over 30,000 members. That fellow didn't sleep much. Uh, but he was known as the just finally the Jews had him, had him martyred because they couldn't stand how holy he lived before them can I say this we have Luke Luke was a servant Luke had been a physician but he became a servant Luke was the one of many times that pinned down the message he pinned down the book of Acts he pinned down the gospel of Luke and Paul even mentioned that Luke was with him at one point Paul being the great apostle, Luke being a servant. Now, wouldn't you think Luke would say, hey, I was here from the beginning. Who are you? No, that wasn't his, that wasn't his place. He was a servant. Can I say this? Then we know Thomas. Everybody knows Thomas. He's the doubter. He doubted the Lord Jesus had risen from the dead. When I have preached on him, I have brought out that Thomas did not pin down any of the Word of God, and we don't find anywhere in the Word of God where he ever pastored, he ever preached a message, he ever did anything for Jesus. Can I say, when you're sitting on the fence of doubt, you cannot do anything for Jesus. And then that brings us to the last fellow mentioned in verse number 4, Judas Iscariot. Can I say there's much written about Judas in the Gospels? Judas was known for being stingy. Matter of fact, when that lady brought that alabaster box that Miss Brittany sings about, and she poured that on the Lord Jesus, it was Judas who stood up and said, that was a waste. We could have sold that for 300 pence and given it to the poor. He wasn't interested in giving it to the poor. He was interested in hoarding it up for himself. Jesus said, let her alone. She had wrought a good work on me. She was worshiping while he's being stingy. Can I say every church has somebody that's stingy? No matter how many missionaries you want to help, no matter what you want to do around the house of God, no matter what you want to do to get the gospel out, you always got somebody saying, well, preacher, we need to save it for a rainy day. We have no hope for tomorrow. The rapture might happen tonight. I don't want to meet God being stingy. Amen. There are people who need to hear the gospel. But you got stingy people. I talk to pastors everywhere. There's always somebody stingy. Uh, let me help you. This might help you if you're stingy. Just picture this as your, your offering to God. Here, let me help you. When you 
Put it there. You give it to God. You don't have to worry about it no more. It's God's. Just let Him have it. He knows where it needs to go. He knows who needs help. He knows what needs to be done. Just give it to God. Hmm. But if you do this, you ain't getting no blessing because you haven't let it go. You still want strings attached to it. Huh? That might help somebody. That's not my notes, but that might help you. All right? Haven't even got the message. I went tune out number one. Woo! <laughs> Look around. If somebody's nodding off, they're, they're stingy, okay? <laughs> He's known for being stingy. Judas is known for selling the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Yes, sir. Yes. He had a real problem with money. Amen. He valued money more than he did the Savior. There's some people that value things of the world more than they value the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say this about Judas? He's known for committing suicide. Now, I want you to remember those three points. He's stingy, he sold out the Lord, and he committed suicide. I'm going to preach on this thought for just a minute this morning. Now, don't tune me out, but I want to preach on this thought. Saved or lost, I want you, I want you to listen to this thought this morning. I'm going to preach on, are you like Judas Iscariot? Are you like Judas Iscariot? Now, I don't want you looking to the right or the left, in front of you, behind you. You're not the Holy Spirit. But I do want you looking within. I want you to listen and look within. And answer the question at the end of this message, am I like Judas Iscariot? Can I say, first of all, about Judas Iscariot, he was discipled. Judas was taught the things of God. Can I say that he knew the word? He heard every message Jesus preached. Sure. Now, listen, I'm sorry, this is what you get. <laughs> God's one called me, God's one placed me here, and I'm sorry, this is all you get. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if for three and a half years, Tommy Tutu, you got to listen to Jesus. It don't get any better than that. Amen. I mean, uh, we're longing for him to show up, manifest himself through the preaching. Judas sat when he preached. I mean, sat this close to Jesus when Jesus preached. Uh, that great sermon on the mount, uh, uh, Judas was there and heard it. Uh, every message, every miracle, everything Jesus ever spoke or did, Judas was exposed to it. And he knew the word. He said, Preacher, I know what the Bible says. So did Judas. Can I say this? Not only was disciple because he knew the word, but he knew the work. Amen. Judas knew every requirement of the ministry. Every private lesson that Jesus told his disciples uh, when he sent them out by two and told them uh, uh, not to take anything from anybody. Uh, and he told them if they rejected the gospel, wipe the dust from the shoes of your feet and go on. Uh, uh, he knew every aspect of the work of ministry. Say, preacher, I've been in church for years. I know how the church runs. So did Judas. Can I help you with something? Judas went out on visitation. Mm. Judas helped carry Jesus' load. He was discipled. He knew the word. He knew the work. Judas knew how to worship. He knew how to worship. He witnessed it, but we have no evidence that he ever did it. Let me say that again. He witnessed worship, but we have no evidence that he ever did any worship. There's a lot of folks go to church, but do you worship? People have the mindset that this is some kind of requirement and this is how we serve God. This is worship. Hey. Yes, sir. Service happens outside these walls. Amen. This is worship. This is where we come to give unreservedly our very best back to God. I mean, you get your air from God. You get your health from God. You get everything you have in your life from God. Uh, and God just says, uh, uh, come back on the uh, first day of the week and worship uh, and give God praise and honor and glory for how good He's been to you. Amen. 
This isn't service. And if it's a chore, you may be more like Judas than you think. A.W. Tozer, that great preacher of years gone by, said this. We can know the right words, yet never be changed. This is the difference between information and transformation. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, old things become new. If you uh, have been saved by the grace of God, you're not what you used to be. Uh, but there are a lot of folks that are informed. Judas was. Uh, they know the word. Uh, they know the works. Uh, they know what worship is. Uh, but they've never been transformed into doing any of it. It's all a chore. Judas was a disciple. Can I say something else about Judas? Judas was devoted. Judas was faithful. He never missed church. Can that be said of you or I? Yeah, if you can't say amen, say oh my. Or oh me. He was faithful. He was devoted. Can I say this about Judas? He was a follower of Jesus. Everywhere where Jesus went, there went Judas. He followed the Lord. Can that be said about you or me? Can I say this? He was familiar. He was familiar with everyone in every aspect of discipleship. Judas was friends with these other eleven. They were shocked that he was the one that betrayed them, even though Jesus told them. He knew everything about them. He fellowshiped with them. He practically lived with them. And he knew every aspect of discipleship. He was devoted. He said, well, I go to all the church events. So did Judas. Why? Well, have uh, church people in my house. So did Judas. And Judas was discipled. He was devoted. But can I say this about Judas? He was deceived. He was deceived. Can I say that Judas fooled himself into believing that he was okay? I don't mean to embarrass anybody, but I'd like every person in here today that at one time was a lost church member and you was deceived, but thanks be unto God, he was long-suffering and he dealt with you about it and you got saved. Can you raise your hand? Everybody that was a lost church member, look at them. Don't think coming to church and praying a prayer makes you okay. Amen. Brother Bob, did you pray when you was a lost church member? Did you read your Bible when you was a lost church member? Did you go to church when you was a lost church member? But you weren't okay. But you made yourself think you was. He's lost. Hmm. I read this this week. It made a lot of sense to me. The easiest person in the world to deceive is yourself. And Proverbs 23, 7 says this. For as he thinketh in his heart... So is he. If you think about it long enough and start believing it, it's so. It may not be reality, but in your heart, it's so. If you look in the mirror and you tell yourself every day you're ugly, you'll believe you're ugly. And don't matter how many times somebody tells you you're handsome or you're pretty, you still believe you're ugly. So in your heart, you're ugly. If you look in the mirror every day and you look like me, last week's trash and you convince yourself you're pretty, somebody can tell you, you look like last week's trash, and you don't care because you're pretty. That's why you go to the mall and something this big is in something this big, and they think they look good. I just came back from the beach. I don't have any time to get into all that mess. Uh, used to, I was convinced people didn't have mirrors anymore. Now I'm convinced they've convinced themselves the mirror's wrong. But see, you can sit in church and you can convince yourself you're okay. You can sit there and say, well, the preacher's preaching on somebody else. Now listen to me. I'm not trying to get somebody saved, lost. It's not my job. 
I'm just trying to ask you, are you like Judas? But if the Holy Spirit's telling you you're not okay, I'd make sure I was okay before I left today. He was deceived. He thought he was okay. Can I say this? He not only fooled himself, he faked out the others. I'm going back to Brother Bob. He's got big shoulders. I didn't take inventory of who all raised their hand. But I know his testimony. When you was a lost church member, did you convince others that you were saved? Yeah. Yeah, others thought you was a good guy. Put on an act. Yeah, put on a good act, didn't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So did Judas. He faked them out so good they let him carry the script of the money. Mm. Let me go over to our treasure. Hey, brother, you don't want to ask for it. You wanted long preaching. I remember when Brother Thad got saved. See, I thought he was saved. So did everybody else. So did he. He was our treasure. It's never a good thing having a lost man keeping the money. So I'm glad the Holy Ghost straightened all that out, showed him he's lost, and he got saved. He came to me and said, what will everybody think? I'm a treasurer. I said, they'd rather have a saved treasurer than a lost treasurer, I guarantee you. Amen. Uh, can I say, the devil will blind you. The devil will try to convince you you're okay, and you'll start listening to the devil. You better start listening to God. He fooled himself into believing he's okay. He faked out others but he was filled by Satan. This is what the Bible says in Luke 22, 3. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being, no, one of, being of the number of twelve. Amen. You know why there are some people who try to live a Christian life, but they can't? Because they're not saved. And you know why there are churches that have had wolves dressed up in sheep's clothing? because they've got people there filled with the devil. The devil's a wolf trying, seeking about whom he may devour. And if he's wearing sheep's clothing, that means he's already devoured another sheep somewhere. Can I say, the devil knows the word too. And the devil's faithful too. He never misses a service. And the devil right now is trying to convince some of you you're okay. Oh, don't listen to that preacher. You don't know what he's talking about. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you can't go back to a place where the Holy Spirit dealt with you about your lost condition, and under that conviction, you by faith called on the Lord Jesus Christ and asked Him to save you and forgive you of your sins, friend, you may be deceived. I can't tell you everything I said, but I can take you back to the place. Third Saturday night of March 1974 when I met the Master. Mm -hmm. You can convince me a lot of things, but you can't convince me I'm lost because I was there when it happened. Because he changed me that day. Everything changed that day when I met the Master. Mm. And can I just say this? I drink all the booze I want to drink, do all the dope I want to do, do all the crowds around I want to do. I don't do any of it because I don't want to. Because when he saved me, he changed my want to's. You know what I want to? I want to read the Word of God. I want to be around God's people. I want to live a clean life. Uh, I want to be a good testimony unto Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to do uh, uh, for Him because of what He's done for me. I love Him because He first loved me. Uh, hey, I can't get enough of Him. Uh, you can't preach too loud to me. can't preach too long to me. Uh, can't preach too uh, uh, hellfire brimstone to me. Are you listening? Uh, you can't sing about Jesus too much for me. Uh, hey, I just love the things of God. Yeah. I don't come to church because I have to. I come to church because I get to. Some of you act like coming to church is a chore. No, going to the dentist is a chore. Come to the house of God's a blessing. Judas, he was discipled. He was devoted. He was deceived. But let me help you with this last point. Preaching short, Dad, just for you. Judas was dissatisfied. Judas never had that peace that some of these people testify. 
Miss Crystal just a couple weeks ago testified. She had peace. The cancer was going to be okay. Did the scan. It's gone. Who gave her the peace? Some big bang out in the middle of nowhere? No. The Father and who she's put her trust in. Some people go through dark times in their life. And they come to the house of God and you never know it. Why? Because they're not dissatisfied with what Jesus has done in their soul. See, when he's changed you, you become a child of his. And there's just a satisfaction that enters your soul that you never had before. Hmm. But Lawrence tell you about his dad serving time being a drunk until Jesus stepped in. He didn't have any more use for that liquor anymore, did he? Because he got a drink from a different well. But some of you, you're dissatisfied with every aspect of your life, but especially this Christian aspect. I got to thinking about Judas being dissatisfied. I mean, why would he sell out the Savior? Maybe because he felt underappreciated. Throughout the earthly ministry of our Lord, you find he'd go to a mountain to pray or he'd go to the mountain to be transfigured or he would go and he'd take his inner circle, Peter, James, and John. The other ones didn't get to go. Now, looking back and reading the Bible, we knew that God was going to put more on those fellas. They were going to be faced with more, so they needed a little more. God knows how much grace you need. That's why he calls some to preach and he gives some the gift to teach and some the talent to sing and others the ability to witness, uh, others the ability to pray. God knows your frame and your makeup and he knows what you can handle. Amen. He knows our limits and he limits our loads. Amen. But Judas didn't get to go to Mount Transfiguration. Judas didn't get to go to Mount to pray. Judas didn't get to go with Jesus. Maybe he felt underappreciated. Maybe you're here today and you feel underappreciated. Hmm? You're dissatisfied. There's a reason people start looking for another church. They get dissatisfied somewhere. Now, if the church isn't preaching the word, you ought to run from it. If the church isn't built on the foundation of Jesus Christ and his apostles, you ought to run from it. And if the church goes contemporary and starts watering down the things of God, you ought to run from it. There's some things you don't even need to pray about. But if it's a fundamental Bible preaching, Bible believing church, and there's dissatisfaction, maybe it's not with the church. Well, how come Brother James gets to sing? Because Brother James is ready to sing. And the pastor likes hearing him sing. How come Brother Tommy don't get to sing? Well, we don't even want to go there. I want to have somebody to preach to when he gets done. That's why. You know how Brother James gets to sing, or Brother Lawrence, because when I enter the sanctuary, I've already been praying, God, lay on my heart, who's got a song? I don't know how many times I've called on somebody to sing, and the song goes right along with what I'm preaching. I don't always hit it, but I don't miss it very often. Hmm. Can I say? That's why sometimes I don't know, and I'll say, anybody got a song on your heart? I, I put the burden on you. I'm just trying to say he felt underappreciated. Maybe because you don't get used in the service. Maybe because your back don't get patted on enough. Mm. Can I help you something? There's a coming a day in that congregational song we sung about, living a beautiful life. There's coming a way a day you're going to get better than a pat on the back. You're going to get rewards for those things you did for Jesus. And if you constantly need a pat on the back, you're in bigger trouble than I can help today. Hmm? If you don't do it because you love Jesus, you're in trouble. He just felt underappreciated. Maybe you feel underappreciated today. Hmm? Got dissatisfied. Maybe he felt underutilized. His ideals weren't put into practice. Did he not say? We should have sold this alabaster box 
300 pence to give to the poor. Now listen, giving to the poor, that's a biblical principle. But giving your first and your best to God comes before giving to the poor. And that's what she did. But his idea wasn't used. It wasn't a bad idea. Just wasn't utilized. Maybe he got to feeling dissatisfied about that. Well, I gave a good idea. Jesus didn't do it. Hmm? I've had people say, Preacher, wouldn't it be a good thing to do this? I say, Well, it might be. Let me pray about it. If God don't say do it, we're not going to do it. I don't care how good an idea. Amen. Well, Brother Doug never uses my idea. I've had that thrown up my face. They're no longer here. Well, I've wanted to do this for years. Good. But God didn't say do it, so we're not going to do it. Hmm? What's our world rule around here? Mind the Lord. Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. But if he don't tell us to do it, we're not going to do it. I don't care how good a good idea. Well, maybe Judas felt dissatisfied. Maybe he felt under pressure. Maybe he felt pressure to conform and change. You know, the Bible does say, be you separate, come out from among them, and I'll be a father unto you. Huh? Can I say, as Christians, we're not to look like the world because we're not of the world. We're not of the rudiments of this world. We've been changed. And Paul said, work out your salvation. That don't mean work to be saved. That means what God's put in you, you ought to work out in your life, and you ought to look more like Christ every day. I have this on my desk there. I wrote this down, and I, and I uh, uh, shared this with our Sunday school class. Uh, stars shine the brightest when it's the darkest. Tommy didn't get that. <laughs> Stars shine the brightest when they get to darkness. No matter where you move, I find you. You know that. Hmm? Gravity. Gravity. Yeah. I won't talk about gravitational pull. I'm talking about stars. <laughs> Miss Mary, we could go out there right now, beautiful sunny day. You can look up at the sky. You're not going to see the stars, but they're there. But you come back tonight, when it's dark, you'll see the heavens full of stars. Because they shine when it's dark. We're living in dark times. It's time God's people start being light and salt. It's time we shine. And I said this in Sunday school, Brother Lawrence. The stars that shine the brightest are the ones that are closest to the sun. Maybe he, he felt some pressure because he wasn't living a separated life. Maybe he wasn't conformed. Maybe he didn't get to preach. And didn't, well, we know for a fact he wasn't saved. But, but listen, uh, he wouldn't conform. And by the way, your flesh never wants to conform. And you can't conform unless the Spirit of God lives inside of you. Can I say there have been people who have left our church because they don't want to conform or change. Can I say life is constantly about changing. My chest used to be up here. Now it's in my drawers. Life changes. Uh, I never had gray hair until a few years ago. It's getting gray. It's better than turning loose. Life changes. Uh, I used to be able to get up and go. I get up and go, went. Now I got to get up and take Ben Gay and rub it all over me just to move. Uh, Life is full of changes. But can I say the Christian life is one great change. You change from being a sinner to the saint of God. You change from being lost to being saved. You change from headed to hell to headed to heaven. Huh? And can I say the entire process of the Christian life, He is just molding us and shaping us huh? that we can be what He intended us to be, a vessel that shows the world what Jesus Christ can do in a life. But if you still want to look like the world, smell like the world, act like the world, do worldly things, and when you come to church, it gets preached on, you get mad, you're going to be dissatisfied. Yeah. We've had people leave because they didn't want to change. One way or other, you're going to give an account to God for yourself. You know what preaching is designed to do? It's, in, it's designed to show sinners that are lost and bring them to the salvation, bring them to the knowledge of the Savior. And it's designed to knock all the rough edges off of God's people so that when we are read, as the Bible says, we're written epistles known and read of all men, 
when people watch our life, they see the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. Amen. And when people refuse to change, they become dissatisfied. Can I say this? Maybe he felt underpaid. You do know these disciples left their livelihoods. James and John and Peter had good fishing businesses. Matthew was a tax collector. He was a rich man. You know, I, I, I said this in my Sunday school class. I don't know where it got in our mindsets that we can only take the gospel to people who have nothing. Jesus loves everybody. Rich and poor, they both need Jesus. Matthew was a tax collector. Huh? So was Zacchaeus. He wasn't a disciple, but he became a, a Christian. Amen. Rich men. He was, he was under conviction so much to change after he got saved, he went and gave back everything he stole from people. Glory. Amen. I just wish people would give what they robbed from God. Amen. Hmm. Huh? These guys left their businesses, their work, to follow Jesus. Most of the time they slept outside and all they had is what Jesus would uh, catch for them to eat. One time they even wanted some figs and the fig tree didn't even have any. Everything they did was done on a volunteer basis. But Jesus told them they'd have treasure in heaven. Maybe he felt like I'm worth more than this. And I say, I've known many young preachers go bad because they thought that they was going to get a big salary. If a salary is why they get in the ministry, they're in the wrong business. He felt dissatisfied. He wasn't compensated. He had too much volunteer work. We began this message asking you, are you like Judas Iscariot? Say, preacher, are you saying I'm lost? I'm not saying anything. I'm just asking you a question. Do you truly know that you've been saved by the good grace of God? Nothing else matters Do you know that. Right. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobates. That word reprobate means tested out worthless. If you're not saved, you're worthless to God. Amen. Have you been saved? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that you've called on the Lord Jesus Christ and accepted Him as your Lord and Savior? Can you go back to a place where He convicted you and showed you He was lost? And that night, that day, you gave your heart to Jesus. That day he changed you. Can you go back to where he changed you? I'll never forget. The bird sounded sweeter, the grass looked greener, and the sky looked bluer. The same color as it's always been, but I was looking under a different perspective because I wasn't the same. Hmm? Used to, I, I, was, I was bored at church until I got saved. Used to, I got drugged to church. I had a drug problem. Then I got saved. I couldn't wait to get to church. Amen. Used to. The only time I ever read my Bibles, if the Sunday school teacher said how many chapters you read, and I'd have to give an answer. But after I got saved, I found love with the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? Good. Have you been changed? Are you truly born again? Do you know that? Or are you like Judas Iscariot? You've deceived yourself. Let me ask you this. Are you stingy? Say, preacher, I'm saved. Good. Are you stingy? You still might be like Judas. You might be a saved Judas. Are you stingy with your time? How much time do you give to God every week? How much time do you spend praying and seeking God's face? How much time do you spend being in the Word of God? Brother Phil told me he had a couple... Mormon show up at his door yesterday and he went out to talk to him and all of a sudden verses just started popping in his head. You know who did that? The Holy Ghost. Amen. But if you don't put it in, it's not coming out. Amen. Are you stingy with your tithe? That belongs to God. Let me help you something. It all belongs to God. He just allows us to keep what 
we get to keep. Are you stingy with your talents? Well, Josh had a good devotion this week. But if you don't use your talents for God, he may just take them away and give them to somebody else. You have a gift. You have an ability to be used for God. Are you using it? Or are you stingy? Hmm? Let me ask you this. Do you sell out Jesus? Judas just did it for 30 pieces of silver. I've seen people claim to be saved, sell him out for a whole lot less. It amazes me that people that don't serve Jesus faithfully always have an excuse. So did Judas. Might be just like him. What do you sell him out for? What's it take to knock you out of church? Or knock you out of the work? Or knock you out from following Jesus? And then let me, let me ask you this lastly. Are you committing spiritual suicide? Judas went out and hung himself. Judas is in hell today. If you're here today and you're lost and you keep trying to convince yourself you're saved, you're committing spiritual suicide. You're being made twofold the child of hell. You've got to get lost before you can get saved. You're committing spiritual suicide and every time you reject the word of God, you are tempting God to never speak to you about your salvation again might be your last time I preached years ago I don't know if you remember this preached on Russian roulette spiritual Russian roulette some of you are taking a chance that God will give you tomorrow you might be here today and you might be saved and you might be committing spiritual uh, suicide see you're sowing to the flesh rather than the spirit and you're drowning the spirits working out of your life and you're getting colder and colder and more complacent and darker and darker and darker and you're having no impact on this world for Jesus. You know, you can get so far from God, Paul said that he turned some over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the soul might be saved. You can get so cold and so useless to God, God just puts you in the grave because people are tripping over your life and dying and going to hell. So let me ask you again. Saved or lost? Are you like Judas Iscariot? You know, Peter had a lot of faults. <laughs> but in the end, he figured it out and he lived for God. You know, I'd much rather be identified with him than Judas. Hmm. Let me ask you again. Are you like Judas Iscariot? Or are you like Jesus Christ? Because if you bear his name, that means you're Christ-like. Are you living for Christ and as unto Christ? Or are you just aimlessly drifting through life, hoping it turns out in the end? Life's too short for that, friend, and there's too many souls that need to know Jesus to be like Judas. I seriously would look within today and examine yourself whether you're in the faith. Do you know Jesus? Why don't you come? Give your heart to Jesus. If you say, Preacher, I, I am. I, I am what I'm always supposed to be, but I'm saved. Hallelujah. Don't be like Judas. Don't go through the motions. Make your life count for Christ. Impact your world for Jesus. Don't be like Judas Iscariot. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song. Folks are already coming to the altar. You just ask yourself the question. Ask the Lord. Lord, am I like Judas Iscariot? You ask him, he won't lie to you. Ask him. Lord, am I like Judas? If you don't know if you're saved, ask the Lord. He'll tell you. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for your good grace and thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the sweet liberty to preach. It was a sober message, but Lord, there was a lot of liberty here. And we're thankful for that. Now, God, we pray for Holy Ghost conviction. Lord, I've done the best of my ability, but, Lord, we now ask that the Holy Spirit would do His office work. Help folks to be serious and examine themselves. Help them to ask you the question, Am I saved? And then ask the question, Am I like Judas? Lord, I know you tell them the truth. God, I pray folks will come. Lord, if there's folks that are lost... 
Maybe they've deceived themselves or been deceived by the great deceiver, the father of lies, the devil himself. I pray you'd open their eyes to truth that they might open their heart for Jesus, move in and change their life. God, I pray for Christians. Lord, they desire more of God. You'd revive their heart and change their life for your glory. We might be transformed into thy likeness and truly impact our world for Christ. Now, God, speak to hearts. Bless this invitation. God, help folks to be obedient to the Spirit of God. Well, thank you for what you accomplish. It's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen.